All right, so in this video, we're gonna go over public hunting, how I find it, what I do, what tools I use, and why I choose the places that I, I choose. So here on the screen, you'll see that I'm using Onyx Maps, and it's a great tool, but you don't have to use it. You can use HuntWise, or you can use uh, Hunt Stand, or whatever uh, you can use, even Google Earth or Google Maps or something will do it. Just as long as you have those contour lines, the ability to do contour lines, really that's about all you need. I like on it or I like Onyx because you can see where the public lines are and kind of play off of it. So I decided I wanted to go public land hunt in an area that I was familiar with, but in a new location on that public. Now this truly panned out to be a good location because well, I sat there yesterday and uh, had a lot of activity, found some scrapes, had a, a, a buck walk past, a, a decent size, like medium size, six point walk past. We had does walk past. We had a coyote come in and I just want to go over what I did to find this spot, how I decided that I wanted to go here and then what was my plan. So obviously you need boots on the ground really, but a lot of us, when we're looking for public land, we kind of don't know where to start. So I just recommend finding a piece of public land near you that you can go to, um, that you have access to, and then really start analyzing the, the way um, that it's structured, laid out, the habitat, everything around it. So again, let's hop over here to Onyx and I will show you my thought process and why I have the pins where they're set. Here on Onyx, you'll see this is a northern part is the public land. And then you can imagine that right behind like where my mouse is going, it is this tree line here is the border. And everything south of it is private. Now, I like to use private land as a way to uh, hunt. I love hunting the, the borders of public and private because a lot of times private people put work into they have feeders ag fields stuff that the you might not find uh or they're doing things that you cannot do on public you know i like bait um plant stuff and um, cut down trees and habitat management so i try to find an area where the private owners are most likely probably doing something that we can't do on public that will benefit our hunt and here I chose the southern port uh, or the southern part of the hunting area or the, the public land. And I want to go over why I chose this area. And I've never been here, but let's go over why I chose this area. So first off, I needed to figure out where decent hunting locations would be. And in public land, you want to find pinch points. You want to find water. You want to find food. And... So I was scrolling around and I chose this area and let's go over why I chose this area. As I mentioned earlier, the Southern part of this area is private property. You can see the houses over here. You can see the ag fields here. There's a pond over here and ag fields on this other side. Up North here is all public land. And if you go up even further North, you'll see more parking locations and uh, some different terrain. Now, with the parking locations being up north and the prominent or prevailing winds in this area blowing from the north, northeast down to the south, southwest, so it's coming from the top here and it's blowing down, any of these people that come down through here, most likely, unless they're coming from over here and they're cutting across, they're blowing all of this area out as they come in and if they come in from the top they're coming in and they're blowing all of this area so I chose the southern border because the winds are blowing uh, out of public into private another reason I chose this place that caught my eye was this ravine here you see like this little creek or ravine that runs down through here and you can tell by the contour lines here that this is um, some type of ditch and what do we got so it's probably 80 to 50 
you know, it's a 30 foot, 40 foot drop from the sides. And it, so it looks pretty steep. And then if you scroll down here to the pub or the private land, sorry, you'll see like there's this block of timber with this long stretch here. Now, what caught my eye about this is if the wind is prevailing in this area and it's blowing from the north to the south for the majority of the time, then that means I want to be on the southern border. And most likely what I would imagine is happening, since this parcel is so small, we're going to have hunters just running around through here and it's going to push these deer down into this block of woods. Well, when they get there, more than likely, they're going to stay there. Why? Because, well, it's sanctuary. They got beans here or corn or whatever they planted. You might have this guy over here. You know, he might be uh, running feeders. You just never know. But once they get down here, this is kind of like their safe area, right? All these hunter hunting pressure up north. They can't go into this block of woods. However, we know as deer, uh, we know that the deer migrate, they move around throughout the day, and only so many deer can fit in here. So most likely we're gonna have deer in here during the day, and they're gonna migrate towards the food during the afternoon. Well, this couldn't be any more true when I went out there. And we'll get to that here in a minute. So off to the side here, there's a parking spot, and then I noticed this kind of clear cut area that I could run the southern border and come in and get to where I wanted to be around this block of woods. Now the only downfall with coming into the southern border, which is something that I weighed and I considered it being a uh, acceptable, was that the wind is coming from the north and blowing into this block. So no matter really where I go in here, I'm gonna be blowing out the southern port. But the way I'm hunting is I'm using the wind and I'm using the idea that the deer are in the woods and they're going to come to the field in the afternoon. I parked here yesterday, walked all the way down through that clear cut opening. And my idea was to get across this ravine and get on this other side because I wanted the wind to blow to the south, southwest. And I wanted the ability to hunt this section in the ravine as well as anything that was going to come through this timber block and you can clearly see from the aerial photo here that there's not quite sure what these trees are but you have a uh, mature timber block right in here so deer are going to travel this transition more than likely they're going to come through this transition or they're going to run this bench down my goal was to get to this stand location on the other side of the ridge I actually didn't get that far because right in this location here, we'll, we'll put a marker here, there was a scrape. So let's just go here into, this is why I like Onyx. We can go all the way down alphabetical order, come down here and look for, I know it's in here. Here we go. Look for a scrape. And then, you know, uh, what's she? So there was a scrape right about here. So what I did when I got in, I walked all the way over to this location and realized how deep this really was and didn't want to cross over. So this is all unhunted for me as of right now. But really decided to sit up, grab my sticks, grab my saddle, and hop into a tree right here, figuring that they would might want to crisscross the public right in this location and well when I got out there that's really what they did they actually came right down here I got footage of them jumping on a scrape and then they were making their way over diagonally to this area and then with the wind blowing they actually caught my scent right around in here but I had them walking around I had perfect 30 yard shot 20 yard shot from the stand I was in all the way over I did notice that when I was in there, there was some deer that were running down this ravine too as well. And this is where that buck was at. So he was cruising this bench 
and he crossed right over into here. I can only assume I didn't see him actually cross this field. This is actually tall CRP grass right now. So he disappeared into here and I'm sure he went into this timber block and they were probably out here feeding somewhere. So from my experience when I was out here in this, this location, uh, seeing that the scrape was here, we had most of the deer come out through here. We actually did have some deer come out this transition line across and then ran and they were just kind of hanging out over here. So all in all, I know that this place is a good location and we're gonna be hitting the woods again later, but I just wanted to give you a breakdown so this is what we found. So now I have to go out. I'm not gonna go out today. I got some things I have to do up at the property, but um, I'm gonna let this sit for a day and I'm planning on going out in the afternoon for another afternoon hunt to kind of let this place rest up a little bit as long as no public hunters are there and whatnot. But uh, let this place, this is definitely a good location that um, I would definitely hunt again. I mean, it was untouched. I mean, there was scat everywhere. There was. There was um, rubs, there were scrapes, and I've seen upwards well over 10 deer while I was out there, and the majority of them I could have took a shot on. So, chose not to. I chose not to take any shots because I didn't want to burn the area out right away. If there is a big buck in that area, I didn't want to be trampling around more than I had to, and I was just kind of filling out the area. There's nothing wrong with going and sitting out on the the land and and not taking the shots so um that is it for now uh when i come back it's going to be sunday and we're going to be heading back out so we can visually see what we have here and then compare it to boots on the ground and kind of cross reference and come up with a plan since we have sat out here we looked at the map we compared it to what we've seen and we're going to make adjustments to it and we're going to do that Sunday morning, and then we're going to head out Sunday afternoon for a hunt.